Muslim. I believed Islam was genuinely true. I believed that it was the true monotheism, that Christians who worshipped the Trinity were polytheists. Mm. Uh, not realizing it, uh, they, they didn't realize that they were worshipping three. Uh, they would say one, but it was actually three, and they didn't know what they were doing. That's what I believed. And so I would extend people the invitation to Islam. I would argue that the Bible isn't reliable. I would argue mm. that Jesus' death on the cross doesn't pay for one's sins, mm. uh, that Jesus never claimed to be God. These kinds of basic Islamic claims, I would argue for them. And what I found was that the average Christian had no response. Mm. And so that made me more confident and bold in presenting Islam to Christians. So it wasn't until I got to my university that I ran into somebody who actually had a response. And okay. In his case, it was defending the Bible. He gave me good reasons to believe the Bible was reliable. So this person was obviously very influential. You had, I think, a number of long-running discussions and debates with him. Uh, you were roommates, is that correct? Well, we met uh, because we were both on the debate team, um, and we were on a tournament together, and we ended up uh, rooming together on those tournaments. Yeah. Um, but after that, I found out he was studying biology. I was doing pre-med, and so we would sign up for classes together. We would study <laughs> together, and in our free time, we would just argue about, uh, right. about the Quran and about the Bible. and. Uh, so, yeah, we really did have great long discussions, which lasted over the course of years. I mean, he didn't convince me of anything overnight. It was no. the fact that we had this long-running discussion where we could revisit things that we had discussed before. What would you say was the turning point for you then? The turning point, I would say, was, uh, well, first, we didn't talk about Islam critically right away. The, the, we talked critically about Christianity, and I was quite convinced that the Bible had been altered over time, that Jesus never claimed to be God, that the Trinity was unreliable in terms of uh, unviable as a concept even. Mm. Um, and so over the course of these discussions, he was able to show me how he could rely upon the text of mm. the Scripture, um, how we could know that the New Testament message has not been changed. Um, and it took me about a year, but I realized that's probably true. But then I asked, where in the Bible does Jesus claim to be God? Now, that's kind of the most important thing mm. for Muslims, mm. uh, because Jesus is a prophet, according to Muslims. He's the Messiah, even, but he's not God. And according to the Quran, he never claimed to be God. Uh, so if we find that the New Testament is reliable, and therein he claims to be God, that's a problem for Muslims. Mm. So first, looking at the Gospel of John, and then moving my way through the synoptics to Mark's Gospel, uh, I realized that Jesus always claimed to be God, all four Gospels. He's God, even before the Gospels were written, if you believe Paul's mm -hmm. writings came first, which most people do. Paul says Jesus is God. The early Christian community uniformly said Jesus is God. And how are these Jews who are so emphatically monotheist saying mm -hmm. this man is God? Uh, it only makes sense if we conclude that Jesus himself claimed to be God. And so when I realized that the historical evidence was in favor of Christianity, that's what got me to bend my knee to God and say, God, can you show me who you are? It wasn't that I was convinced Christianity was true, mm. but that's when the search went from an academic one to a heartfelt one. Tune in to the Profile Interview in association with Christianity Magazine every Saturday at 4 p.m. Only on Premier Christian Radio, where faith comes to life.